Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AEC Technical Specialist with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to be looking at tables and how we can customize them. We have an existing door schedule table. Let's make a window schedule table. We can do this by going to our Home tab and going to our Annotation panel, and we can click on Table right here. Or we can go to our Annotate tab and go to our Table panel, or we can click on Table, and we can look at existing tables by clicking on this drop-down so we can choose between our door schedule table or our standard table. In a later tutorial, we're also going to be covering how to download tables from another source, such as Excel, the opposite, where we upload a table from AutoCAD to another source, such as Excel as well, and we'll learn how to extract data and link data. Let's create a new table for our window schedule. We can click on our table icon, and first, let's create a new table style for our window schedule. We could use the existing door schedule style, but instead, let's make one for our window schedule. We're going to launch the table style dialog now. Here, we can make a copy of either the door schedule or our standard table, but the door schedule has already been modified to our standards, so we're going to click on New. And here, all we have to do is rename this. We'll call it Window Schedule, and we're going to start with our door schedule as our guide. So all of the settings from our door schedule are now going to appear in our window schedule. If we wanted to, we could also select a table that's already on our sheet. So if we haven't created the table on our DWG and somebody else gave us this table, we can select it and get all the settings from that table as well. Then we can change our table direction. So if we wanted our title and headers to be at the bottom of the table, we can change the direction from down to up. We're going to leave it at down for now so that our title and headers are at the top. Now let's modify our cell styles. We're going to start off with our title. As you can see, we have no fill color. Our alignment is at the middle center of our cells. Our format and types are here. These types mean that if it's a label, then it's expecting text to be input. But if it's data, it's expecting numbers and or text to be input. And you can change this once the table is also created. Then our margins are quite important. This is going to determine how much space is in between our text and the cells that they reside inside. We could also merge our cells on row slash column creation, which is quite important. We're going to leave that as is, and we can also modify this afterwards. So our title seems to be fine. Let's go from our general to our text and make sure that that's correct. Our text style right now is standard. If we wanted to, we can modify that further. So right now, the standard text style, I've changed the font from the regular font to Times New Roman. And this is going to pick up our fonts for our Windows PCs. Let's click on Cancel because everything here seems good to go. And we can modify our text height. So right now, our titles are going to be set to one unit. We can modify our text color. So instead of by block, I can change it to by layer. And we can modify our text angle. So instead of having it straight horizontal, we can make it any angle we'd like in all 360 degrees. Let's go to our borders. We can change the line weight of our borders. I've changed mine to 0.2 millimeters. And our line type, mine is going to be by layer. That way we can modify the color and the line type by the layer that the table is on and not necessarily by block, for example. By block is usually set to default. We could also allow for double lines and we can choose what kind of border we want. I prefer to choose the regular border around the data, but if we wanted to, we could actually put lines inside of our cells and allow our border to be changed. So it looks like our title is correct. Now let's go to our headers. So the headers have very similar settings, except when we go to text, the text height is about half the size of our title at 0.5. Besides that, let's make sure that our text color is set to by layer. The border seems to be correct, and everything here seems to be standard. Let's now check our data. So this type is data now. You can see that it changed from label to data. Headers and titles are labels, so we'll leave them as that. And our text size, instead of being 0.5 like the headers, is slightly smaller at 0.4. And let's make sure that our text color is also by layer and our borders seem to be correct. We can make sure that we're using outside borders from our text. And when we're ready, we can click on OK. And now our window schedule is ready to go. Now we can set it as our current one by default and we can click on close. Now that we've created our table style, let's modify some more settings for our table. We can create an empty table. We could form a data link between an Excel sheet and our table. Or we can take an existing table on our drawing and we can use all of its data and put it into this table. In this case, we're going to be making a brand new empty table. We can specify an insertion point for our table or specify a window. 
If we specify a window, then our column width and data rows will automatically be calculated based on the size of our window. In this case, we have specific columns and rows that we want to place, so we're just going to specify an insertion point. Now, we can choose how many columns we want. In this case, we just want three. Our column width can stay at five units. Our data rows can go from five to six, and our row height can stay as is. Our cell styles can also be modified. So if we wanted our first row to be something other than the title, we can choose between header, data, or other cell styles. Let's insert our table to our sheet. We'll put it to the left of our door schedule, and immediately upon insertion, we can begin to type the title of our table. Let's call it Window Schedule. And we can deselect our table by clicking outside of it. Now, let's input our headers. We can click on our first cell, and we can start typing. So we can start typing our header right there. Now, we don't have to manually type all of our data. What we can do is we can take existing data from another table and copy it into this one. So we're going to click on this cell, Control-C to copy, and then we'll click on this cell and do Control-V to paste. Let's do the same for height, Control-C. Sometimes it selects the whole table, so just press Escape to deselect it. Click on the cell one more time and ensure that only height is being copied and not the entire table. Let's click on this cell and then we'll do Control V. Now, instead of copying each cell one by one, what we can do is we can click on one cell and we can click on the last cell, but let's hold Shift and then click. Now all of our cells are selected, so we can do Control C. And let's go into this cell right here and we'll do Control V and all of our cells have been copied. Now we have an extra row. So if we click on this row down here, you might have also noticed that while inside of a cell itself, we have these table cell options at the top. So now we can modify how many rows we have by inserting a row above or below the existing row that's highlighted, and we can also delete a row. Let's delete this row. We can also insert columns to the right or left of the existing highlighted column and delete columns as well. If a cell has different properties from another cell and you want them to automatically be the same font and the same font size, etc., you can use Match Cell, which is very similar to the Format Painter. You can also change the orientation that a cell's data is in, so instead of it being in the middle center, you can make it top left, top center, etc. Then you can lock cells from being accidentally modified if you needed to, or you can change the data format of a cell. So right now this data format is text. We could set it to general, date, currency, etc. Then we can use special insert fields to allow us to change the data from external sources. We can use formulas to calculate the sum of one cell based on the input from other cells and the data from those other cells. We can also link cells from one cell to another or for, to a Microsoft Excel file. And so we're not going to input all of our data into this table, but this table is basically complete. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on tables in AutoCAD. Once again, my name is Ari, I'm an AEC Technical Specialist with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.